My name is Patricia Restrepo, and I am one of the curators of the exhibition Slowed and Throwed, which is a two-part interdisciplinary exhibition orbiting around the legacy of DJ Screw. This exhibition focuses on the DJ's process of chopping and screwing and provides a lens of suggested viewing of contemporary visual artwork in relation to that process. Tay Butler is one of the 15 visual artists in the show who produces work through strategies that parallel DJ Screw's methods. DJ Screw liberated and redirected sampled material through his mastery of chopping or emphasizing and layering instrumentals, melodies, and lyrics to produce original sounds. This additive production process allowed new openings into extant music material. DJ Screw also layered improvised freestyles from Houston-based rappers onto these mixtapes. Tay Butler's concerns with layering manifest in the form of collage, likening him to a visual DJ. Tay collages and integrates appropriated and archival material in his work. This act of remixing addresses personal erasure and constructs a possible heritage for the artist. In his works, there exists visceral play and artistic agency over images culled from a diverse set of contexts. Their recomposition enables a transformation of extant material while allowing Tay to claim his voice. Please help me welcome Tay. It's important for me to thank the people who allowed me to get here. So thank you, Patricia and the CAM, for even thinking of me and including me in the show. But I have some very special people in the building that I need to point out. So the, the first person to ever give me a show, educator and curator, Carmen Champion. Raise your hand. There you go. There you go. Also, all of my professors and classmates from Arkansas, Zora Murph, Rebecca Droll, and Raina Young, Trinity, Nicole, Nicolette, Charles, Josh, please raise your hands. There you go. Don't be shy. And I was only able to construct the work for this show because I needed somebody who had a studio to allow me to finish the work. Uh, so a, a wonderful Houston artist not only allowed me to use her studio, but she also let me use all her spray paint. So <laughs> please raise your hand, Javon. There you go. Don't be shy. All right. So. My name is Tay Butler, and of course, like she said, I like to refer to myself as a multi-hyphenate using photography, collage, and all that other stuff. I have this quote up because this is literally how I live my life. I just swim with my mouth open, and I just try to get as much as I can, right? So I usually start with my own surroundings and histories. Uh, that's my grandmother and her best friend at a house party, turning up. Um, and I'll juxtapose those with literature, folklore, media, local media advertisements, ephemera, historical documents. And then I'll take that content, digitize it, photograph it, cut it, clip it, extend it, collage it, shrink it, enlarge it, expose it, uncover it, repeat it, redact it, and place it into a new context basically remixing of past to present, if you will. I like to exist in a space in between documentary and abstraction, so I create alternative pair of fictions that are often diaristic, usually figurative. This was a photo from uh, my first year of photo block at the University of Houston. I got into a program with a body of work engaging with the complex relationships between me, my son, and my father. I really enjoyed the process, but the images weren't giving me the agency to create the stories that I really wanted to create. So I put the camera down, and I didn't touch it again for like another three years. I quoted Romare Bearden earlier, and he represents literally the aesthetic portal that I walked through and never looked back. I had been putting basketball and rap and Jet Magazine model collages on my bedroom wall since middle school. And so these creations represented what I really wanted to do. 
I got a glimpse of Romare Bearden and I just dove in and I was stuck. And after discovering Lorna Simpson and Jacob Lawrence, I decided that these painterly color drenched collages, speaking about my memories, would be the way that I create my work. So I literally combined the work of Jacob and Romare while exploring the racial and identity subjects of Lorna's work. This collage is a eight inch multimedia photo montage on square wood. I call it silk shirt, so my chest show when I flirt. That's a Nas, <laughs> that's a Nas lyric for those who don't know. It's a composite of a couple individuals who are no longer alive, or I should say one. Um, in front of the corner store on 35th and Hadley, I was going to school and I was running across the street to make the uh, city bus. And uh, apparently I didn't see it, but a car hit me and sent me all in the air. And so this car hit me in the middle of the intersection, sent me several feet in the air and back down with a thud. And, and I don't remember anything from that moment except a guy that we know as Goldie standing on the corner watching. Uh, I don't know if he tried to help me. Uh, I just remember seeing him there and then I woke up with a sling. Uh, I had a field trip that day too and that car ruined my outfit. Um, moonlit. This is a composite of a scene I may have participated in a thousand times growing up playing basketball in the alleys of Milwaukee with a milk crate nailed to a telephone pole. So at this point, I'm collecting and compiling hundreds of magazines, papers, documents, posters, anything with images on it. I'm really interested in National Geographic. I don't know if any of you know, but last year, I think the year before, they admitted that they've been racist for most of their history. Uh, too little, too late now. So what I do now is I take those images and I give them uh, a real purpose, uh, uh, actual uh, service. Um, in many ways, for me, collaging is an act of justice. I can take something that was wrong and make it right. Uh, the damage done by Nat Geo and Life and Time and other you know, racist-leaning publications can never be undone, but I can rewire those images for better purposes. So fast forward, I graduate from U of H, and uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I didn't necessarily think grad school was for me um, financially. But I applied to a, a few grad schools, thanks to my undergrad professor, Kelly Anderson Staley. And uh, to my surprise, I had some very attractive options. Um, but I surprised everybody and chose the University of Arkansas. It was my best decision. It's super nice having the support system that I have, not just art, but in real life. And it's nice having this big ass studio. Um, photo courtesy of Zormer. Um, I felt the change in me from the first day that I arrived there and I felt that it was finally time for me to work in the present, and think about the future. So since I've been in grad school, I've started to study black existentialism and it's many schools of thought from Lewis Gordon to James Baldwin, Richard Wright, Toni Morrison, Nas, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, I'm thinking of influence. I'm thinking of how the city of Houston is influencing me as the place where I became who I am today. I thought about the stories that I've read, the people I became close with. I also think about my peers, Kobe Deal, Irene Reese. They inspire me greatly with the work that they're doing in the Third War. I think about other Houston heavyweights like uh, Jamal Cyrus and Robert Hodge and Ayanna. Uh, Jam uh, Robert really influenced me with his Lawndale installation. I don't know if you all had a chance to see that. Um, and Ayanna has some work at the Gregory School that, that really got through to me. Um, it's super crucial for me to be a real person not a caricature of political correctness or moral excellency or social purity. I'm a black man from the hyper-segregated north side of 1980s Milwaukee, and that has its pros and cons that live inside me every day. I grew up idolizing drug dealers, rappers, and basketball players. Their influences were both positive and negative, and there's no way to separate one from the other. 
So as I grow outward, I will always remain rooted in work that prioritizes place. Fun fact, I'm a music psychopath, so I think a lot about Houston's contributions to music as well. I'm a salon stan for sure, and uh, Maxo Cream can do no wrong. This obviously includes DJ Screw, so I'm, I'm very honored to be a part of this show. So all of this blackness and music and community and culture gets me excited to make portraits again as I capture all of the beautiful people that exhibit blackness in, in ways both positive, negative, forced, organic. And this brings me to the work in today's show. Um, I'm thinking about place, space, influences, states of being, music, portraiture, installation, iconography, objects. So I put it all in a pot and mixed it all together. Uh, my professor Zora has been really on me about making objects. Uh, and I kicked and screamed like a baby because I didn't want to make objects. And then I made an object and realized that I like to make objects. <laughs> so I guess you were right, good sir. This image on the left, eight hour drive, commemorates my journey from Houston to Fayetteville. So I combined some photography from Arkansas, components of Houston culture. It's another step in this crazy ride from a power plant operator to a fine artist. The image on the left is Slamma. It's a live assemblage that I take a lot of inspiration from Solange, actually, who talks a lot about her last album being a way to hold on to cultures that are kind of slipping out of fingertips. And so this is the work in the show. It's right outside. So if anybody has any questions, holler at me. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for listening. <laughs>